blessings before this wonderful message from my father in the lord late archbishop bensi idaosa i'd like to share information about anointedtube.com with you the number one christian video sharing website today anointedtube.com this is a powerful site believed to be the top most Christian video sharing website in the world today. It is ranked as one of the best video sharing website according to available data. It hosts videos of preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from all around the world. You can as well share our video on all social media platforms. The World Database of Christian Precious, positively touching and changing lives around the world. It is a great Christian video sharing website. The Lord bless you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. People want success. So many people have achieved success. Quick riches without maintenance is worse than inherited poverty. Some of you know how to get there, you don't know how to remove them. But how do you maintain success? Is it in the buying of stocks, 
or investing in real estate. To maintain a balanced success, you must try to spread yourself beyond what you have ability to do. Find out from this life-transforming teaching by Archbishop B.A. Idahosa on how to maintain success and you will always be on top in life. I'm speaking on the subject today, how to maintain success. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes. Try bicycle band before a message is bent. <laughs> because bicycle and motorcycle are part of, above all, there's a bend that no man overhauls for you unless the Holy Spirit. That's his leggy bends. <laughs> and you need it. All of us need leggy bends. It goes farther than Mercedes bends in the world. But I want to talk to you as a father. As a pastor to pastors, as a teacher among teachers, and as a university professor. But that's not my profession. My profession is a calling, that I answer the call of God as a teacher. And every day that I turn to the Bible and I read some of the things that I want to read to you tonight, and preach, and see the anointing word, of, anointing power of God upon the spoken word, it brings life. The Bible says yokes are broken by reasons of anointing. You can tell story, nobody will be saved. You can summonize yourself, no one can be healed. But when you preach the gospel, the gospel is a part of God to everyone that believes. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. I want to deal in an area where many Christians are reckless. And they do not know what to do when it comes to that. I'm speaking on the subject today, how to maintain success. For example, among my quotes here, I said, that is just to start with. Success not maintained is worse than poverty inherited. Quick riches without maintenance is worse than inherited poverty. When you suddenly become a preacher for the purpose of Mercedes Benz, you will lose. When your purpose of coming to the ministry is for the addition and not the commission, you may gain the addition, but later you will lose the commission. It is the, it is the commission that brings the addition. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. What is the commission? Kingdom. What is God's obligation expected of you? Seeking the kingdom of God. The extension of the kingdom of God on earth is every child of God's obligation. Whether you have the title of a bishop or a reverend or a teacher or an evangelist, a day we come, you will find that title is just as important as ministry. Some of you want to have title without ministry. So you say, call me doctor. And all of us say, you are a doctor. But by the time we actually come near you, we find that you are a doctor here. 
<laughs> Where things not necessary are dumped to your brain and action is not there to practicalize and actualize what you envision as a new starter. You want to be like everyone else. You want to be like Billy Graham. You want to be like Cerullo. You want to be like T.L. Osborne. You want to be like Tunde Jordan. You want to be like Dr. Kumui or anyone that is known to be big on L. Before you try to be like anyone else, find out first whether you are yourself. Because if you try to be like anyone else, including me, and you don't know who you are, the day yourself will rise, the people you wanted to be like will not be there. So try first, be yourself. Say with me, I want to be myself. Two times. One more time. Now say, God, add to me what I am already. What I am already. Are you ready? Yes. I'm going to turn to the Bible in a few minutes time. But now, success, try that. Say it. Success. Try it. Success. Try it. Success. Success stretches people. Success strengthens people. Success brings joy. Success brings happiness. A friend of mine and I were talking with Benit. He said, when, when goodness is ahead of you, and you are, and mercy is behind you, and you are not in the middle, <laughs> when both of them come to your house, they may not find you. By 2 o'clock, by 12.30, I went to the airport. I just drove there for the job driving there. I said, uh, what time is the flight going to go? They said, one thirty. So I said, fine, one hour from now. So I went home. At quarter to two, I sent two of my drivers with two cars to go. So that one can stay to tell the pilot I'm the one traveling by myself. And then one can race home. By five minutes to two, none of the drivers came to report. So I took another car. That's why some of you have to believe go for more than one car. And I raced towards the airport. Then I took another car to say, you take this route. Just in case the driver didn't take this route and he's taking this route, reverse him to meet me in the office to say, I'm already out of home. So we agreed. When we were very close to my office, we saw the actual driver that I sent to the airport. And he said, they said the flight would be 4 o'clock. That's when the flight is going to leave Kano to come to Lagos. Then get to Lagos by 5 o'clock. They just told him the flight to operate beneath, leaving Kano by 4. Well, I have all gifts on earth, minus one. Patient to do what the devil wants you to do. <laughs> the Bible talks of taking few things in your life by force. Some people may tell you, Dr. Mervyn, take it easy. God they didn't say take it easy he said take charge yes, so people may tell you be careful the bible didn't ask you to be careful it just actually said be careful but nothing do you hear what i'm saying nice. some people say take time the bible said take charge some people say be patient the bible said whatsoever they have find to do do it quickly do, do you understand what i'm saying yes. so don't only memorize your weakness. Try to saturate your spirit by propelling power of God. Always have alternative for negative suggestion. Yes, for instance, if you are sick, try a scripture that says, by his stripes I am healed. For instance, if you are hungry and you know that hunger is not from God, try a scripture that says, he will feed you. For instance, if you are down, try a scripture that says it's the lifter of your head. Find an alternative for a positive, positive, negative situation. Anything that is wrong, there's a right there. If there was no right, you can't find wrong. It's like money. 
You can't say, you can't make counterfeit money. You can only have counterfeit when the real money is around. Yes. Amen. Can somebody say amen. amen. Say with me, maintaining success. Maintaining success. The reason I say a few of the things I say are the, is because there are only a few pastors in Nigeria who can talk. Yes. The rest of them are so busy looking for Naira. And they don't remember statement. They can't make statement. Maybe you read last October 1989, the 10 most controversial people in Nigeria, Idahosa. The 10 Nigerians you cannot ignore, Idahosa. So glad that one day, if the Christians are not brought in, oil will dry up. Yes. God told me, said the reason there's oil in Nigeria is because of Christians. Yes. And if they refuse all to have access to it, it will dry up suddenly. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. John chapter 6, verse 12. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain it, that nothing be lost. So that gather all, 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 all the remaining remain. fragments, fragments that nothing be lost. lost. Try it again. Gather, gather up all the fragments, the fragments that remain. That nothing, that nothing be lost. Therefore, they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five belly loaves who remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Say with me, maintaining success. Jesus forbids recklessness. Jesus warns against recklessness. Jesus advises against recklessness. Jesus answers against recklessness. Now, he said here, the Bible said here, a young boy came to Jesus' crusade. Christ preached three days, three nights. At the end of the crusade, he said, we need not let them go without. We must give them to eat. One of the apostles said, when shall we buy bread? The crowd is too much. Even if we have 200 worth of pennies, it will not be enough for everyone to take a little. The scripture said, for Jesus himself knew what to do. When you come to success maintenance, Christ is the head of success maintenance. He said, where can we find bread? Andrew, the constant finder. When there's a lack in the family, or in the church, or in your business, you become the Andrew. Don't wait for ordination to become a discoverer. Some of you are thinking that as soon as you travel abroad, your whole ministry will turn around with money, surplus. Why the Bible didn't say every good and perfect gift come from abroad. The Bible says every good and perfect gift come from above. And above is better than abroad. I've seen many Nigerians and many Africans. There were five Ugandans that traveled to United States. They were going for two months to go and raise funds, to build cathedrals, to buy buses, to buy caterpillars, to do everything. 
They finally stayed nine months plus. And they came back home owing. Why? The objective was not to minister. The purpose was dollar. And when you put your purpose above the ministry, the purpose is defeated and the money is not realized. When God used to be patient with fools, with those who fool people, he will allow people to give you money on accounted for. But it came to time that God now said, everyone shall give account of himself. So before an American now give you 1,000, they have to find out who know you, whether you are going to buy a boot in dry season, or you are really going to buy a Bible to share to people who really need the word. So, these people stayed and stayed and stayed. Within the nine months they were in America, I visited America 13 times and went to 18 countries within the nine months. They were still there. So they said, Papa, we are still here. I said, you will still be there, brother. <laughs> yeah. They said, what? How do you do it? I said, I'm a messenger. You are a director. <laughs> I'm sent, I'm on an errand. The man who sent me to get me preach in America, they have to book two years in advance before my office will say yes. All my program for 1992 have been covered. We are now part of March of 1993. Because you can't get me like a chicken. I'm not a hungry man. I'm one of the proudest blessed gift that this nation has. I do not go abroad to beg. I go and brag. And bragging is better than begging. Amen. Amen. You know why? You know why I do that, Dr. Melvin? No person on earth gives to a poor man. Only the rich get more. That's why I'm a big man. Do you understand what I'm saying? Once people know that you have nothing, they never give you anything. But when they know that you have so much, they say, just manage this five thousand. Did you hear what I'm saying? So I went to the owner of this aircraft. I said. My staff have just told me that the aircraft to operate one o'clock flight is still in Kano and is leaving Kano by four to be in Lagos at five and then leave Lagos 5.30 to be in by six. I said by that time the people that are waiting for me at the city hall would have angrily gone. He said the aircraft is your own. Go to radio and tell the pilot to divert to Benin from anywhere in the country. Don't tempt me with good things. Yes. I will not only fall into temptation, I will flat. <laughs> I took the radio. Oscar 5, Oscar 5, this is Oscar 12. Oscar 5, this is Oscar 12. Where are you in the sky? Where are you in the sky? Report to me, this is Oscar 10, this is Oscar 12. And all the pilots began to come. Ah. Yes, sir, yes, sir, I said. Which is the nearest here? But I can say I'm close by, sir, but there's no foil in the aircraft. Unless I go to Lagos to refer, I said, I don't need you. Off the line. Oscar 16, report here right now. Kaduna, are you there? All the Oscars, you know. <laughs> find his way to Benin now. Suspend Abuja and come down to Benin. Before 10 minutes, yes. the pilot that was ready for the sign they put at the airport Tama, yes. Abuja was removed and Benin replaced. Yes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Then they now, listen to me why you need power. If you, don't, you don't only need the power of the ground, you need the power of the air. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Because if you are going to find and lose, must get out of the floor. Yes, Somebody say amen. amen. And so they, they took the sign away. This is teaching tonight. Yes, sir. Some of you only believe in poverty. By the time you are rich, you'll be happy you will let poverty. Oh, yes, sir. All right. Now, <laughs> do you know that we have power over the power of principalities yes, and in the air? Yes. And somebody say amen. Yes. So they now remove the thing. They ask the passenger to come in. A bunch of passengers were angry. And they said, the owner of the aircraft said, why the plane in Benin? What are you going to do? <laughs> what will you do when the owner of the aircraft said, come back home? <laughs> so they loaded. When they got to the taxing up, this is grammar that is not in the Bible of some of you. They, they left the apron to come to taxing runway. 
You have to learn some English about the Bible so you can be able to respond when they ask you questions. <laughs> so, on the runway, control power couldn't give them the pattern, the pattern right. Because they said the weather was wrong, this was wrong, they had to queue up. I took the radio again. Control tower, control tower, control tower, this is beneath. Release that aircraft now to come and pick me. A VIP, VVIP is here. Very, very important preacher is here. Don't you think so? And they took them from the number they were before the number they should be. And in 30 minutes, the aircraft was in Benin. That's dominion. Tongue without dominion and tongue without power is exercise without right. I'm not coming back again. So it's not in the right. Tongue without dominion. Tongue, tongue. Tongue. T O N G U E. Kokaba Hakro Soyodoro. It must bring you results. If it didn't bring you results, it's exercise in futility. Don't just speak in tongue. When you speak in tongue, believe that the Bible says you shall have power. Amen. Amen. So that's why I found myself here. That's how I was able to report here. The glory of God. So I'm happy I did that. Now, back to the Bible. Jesus performed this miracle. I needed a miracle to come to Lagos. I have no aircraft. I dispatched my car to start coming by road since 12.30. If I take another car, that would be too much to be on the road while I'm not inside. So, I said I will use the aircraft. Some of you would have gone home. No sakala behold. The Lord gave, the Lord took. <laughs> it's not everything you have lost in your life that God took. 99% of the things you don't have are taken by the devil. Because God is not a destroyer, so he's not a destroyer. God is not a waster, so he's not a waster. God is not a killer, so he's not a killer. So for you to be once rich and now poor is not the will of God. Is it the work of the enemy? But you know the greatest trick that the devil will play is say, be patient. He who owns this world don't own the other world. You are not coming back the second time as a beggar. If you are going to beg, this is the only time you have right. If you are going to be prosperous, this is the only time you have right. Because when you come back again, you have no need of money, aircraft, house, no. Where God is, there shall we be also. Amen. And I thank God there shall be no buying and selling. So if you really want to ride a good car now, don't wait and wait baby. It is now. Are you okay with that? Fine. All right. Now, how did that come to Benin? So Lagos from Benin, when the aircraft was not going to fly, Benin aircraft, air, airport closes at 6. By the timetable I just gave you, the flight would arrive Benin after 6. And there will be no passenger waiting from 9 o'clock in the morning to go back to Lagos at that time. So you have to be calculated. You have to be... You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa 
America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preacher's pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes, it's not everything you lost the devil stole. Your carelessness is part of your losses. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. It's most of the thing. When I got inside the aircraft, every time I'm in the plane, they are now. We welcome his grace, the Archbishop. He said that all the plane. Now I got in, they said, What do you want to drink? I'm one of the people who whose position home position never deprived of what I need. I'm not one of those when I'm thirsty, I go to your house and say, can I give you Fanta? I say, no, 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 don't worry. Brother, give me. <laughs> Everyone that asks it, receive it. Some of you also die in want and need because you are ashamed to say how poor you are. Tell me. When your knowing stops, when your knowing stops, Find who know more to teach you more. Amen. Don't be content with that's all right. It doesn't matter. There are many things you say it doesn't matter that really matters. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. For example, you are driving to the office. Your car punctures tire. Don't let pride say, I'm not going to beg anybody anything. Find a person driving the type of your car, passing by. Stop him. Of course, if you have books, right, you can't stop messages. But they will not stop. I hope you know that one. Messages stop for messages. Books, right, you stop for books, right. Leg stop for leg. A bicycle stop for bicycle. I hope you know that one. Oh, yes. But if you were driving a box and suddenly the tire puncture, don't try to stop the messages, man. Do two things. First, decree that a man with the same kind of car like you will pass that way. It's a success. success. Second, decree that the person you come in will be God's angel sent with the exact same tire you needed. Third, believe God that before you ask, he will give it to you. Did you hear what I'm saying? Yes. Now, people who are not willing to learn more will lose what they already have. Because Life is a plus and not a minus. When life is built too long on a minus, you never have a plus. You didn't hear what I'm saying? One, God said, multiply. Huh? God said, replenish. God said, reproduce. God said, increase god said abound god said good measure in everything that comes out of god's mouth he looked at it there's no minus it's always a plus huh believe god for a plus say i believe for a plus so Reverend, when you come to where your learning ends don't end look for someone who have learned a little more than you because the little that I know, from the big one you know, will make you know one and a half. You didn't hear what I'm saying? Yeah. The small, that, the big that I have, let's put it this way, the big one that you already know, plus the small one you are learning from me now, makes you have one and a half. And if you have one and a half in ten places, plus the one you already have before, that double success. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes. I ask some people sometimes, 
Have you been to Bible school? You say, Holy Spirit is my teacher. I don't need anybody. He said, fine. Who supervises your ministry? God. You know when they fall, God is not always at home. <laughs> All right. What are we here for tonight? John chapter 6, verse 39. Let's all stand to honor God to read this scripture. John, 30, John 6, 39. Carry your Bible, mark it. Everybody stand up, especially if you are pregnant and carrying a baby. Stand up. When you are sick and tired, stand up. John 6, 39. One, two, go. And this is the Father's will, which has sent me, that of all which he has given me, I should lose nothing. But she raised it up again at the last day. Look at someone very close. I bought what I bought lovingly. Say, so brother, from today, lose nothing. First, you must learn to protect your weakness. Don't be a habitual weak person. Don't let everybody around you know how weak you are. If you don't know how to pray, find someone who knows how to pray. And every meeting you have, tell that person to open in prayer. And you should be saying big amen. Go la Bahama, say You say that pastor, he has such an anointing. <laughs> You also know that your prayers are not efficacious. Find someone whose words are efficacious. Find someone who knows what success is and befriend you. Don't expose yourself too much to ignorant. Look for knowledgeable people and hang on. Look for those who know how to succeed to be friendly. Don't you be too close to failure because too many failures at one time bring total failure. Learn to protect your weakness and then learn how to maintain success. Write it down. Learn the act of maintaining your success. You say, what do you mean? Irahusa, what do you mean? I mean that what you didn't spend time to maintain, you will lose in replacing. What Including the ministry. If you have an unction and you don't action your unction, you auction it. And therefore, to the time you know that you have heavy anointing, put the crusade on. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When you are weak in faith, put a Bible study on. And I want to say this whether you are in the ministry or not. Especially those of you who are in the ministry. When you find that your anointing is rising and rising and rising, stay a crusade. You spend more when you don't have anointing. You fast more when you don't have the unction. You preach longer when you don't know what to say. <laughs> when Jesus was going to raise the dead, he didn't say, He just said, Lazarus, come on, get up, brother, and fall no more. Can somebody say, Amen? amen. When you saw the blind. Most of the blind say, Ephata, eyes be open. 
to the, to the with, with that hand said, shut forth your hand. Effortlessly, Jesus performed miracles. What do people do today when they want to have a large number of people in their church? They sell holy water. They find things that attract people. Then they tribalize. They nationalize. Then they indoctrinate. The word of God does not come by indoctrination or tribalism. The power of God, that's one thing I can boastfully, boldly say. When God used me in establishing what is now known as Church of God Mission worldwide, He told me it's my church where no ethnic groups shall have dominion. Amen. That's why my mother have eight of us as her children, seven alive. Not one of my mother's children is a board member in Church of God Mission. It's not a family affair, it's God's affair. Amen. Amen. And when we are 10 people in the board, if you come from 10 states and 10 tribes, I do not, I do not, I do not, I do not, I do not tribalize. I centralize. Amen. Amen. One day, that's what I want all our pastors in America say, excuse me, you are the founder, your wife is the vice president, your daughter is the treasurer, your son is the accountant. That's why when you die, your ministry just finished. Because the family affair. But if it was disputed broadly, everyone would have to protect that thing. But if when there was gain, it was only for your family. When there's losses, your family lose equally. <laughs> don't you think so? Yes. I said, don't you think so? Yes. To maintain a balanced success, you must try to spread yourself beyond what you have ability to do. Amen. Don't always be too used to the usual. Nineteen eighty-five, we had a crusade at Afar Balewa Square. Dr. Mepen was there. Few people were there. First time in Nigeria, one million people gathered in a place for my crusade. Here. After that. People have come from India, Indonesia, America, England, try to have equal crusade like that. Nobody has been able to fill Tabara Ballet were half full. Why? They were not sent. Two, it was not God's time. <laughs> Three, they don't know how. You say, what do you mean? Only you know how. No. You know how I'm talking about was timing. When God said, now, shake the nation. The federal government just made an announcement at that time. No more crusade. No posters, no handbills. How many of you remember? Yes. They made a decree. I thank God. One of the men who was in law enforcement agency was there that time. No crusade, no banner, no handbill. I said, did you hear that? Did you hear when the government announced that one? Yes. I was sleeping in Australia, and God woke me up. He said, print the largest banner and poster you've ever printed. <laughs> and you are going to hold crusade where the law was made. Amen. One thing about me, my name means I'm attentive to God in the house. That's what it means. I woke up, I said, God, how many? He said, how many do you want? I said, two million handbills. 50,000 posters. But I said, where will I find the money? He said, I who gave the vision will make provision. Amen. <laughs> I got, I got up. I gave a contract of two million handbills and fifty thousand posters to our printer, and tons and tons and tons. The third day of the crusade, I'm glad I still have the letter in my briefcase. The state house wrote me to beg me to reduce it to one day, so yes. I can host leader from ten nations. Yes. Success must not only be attained, success must be maintained. Yes. And now what did Jesus say here? This is the Father's will. Say that to everybody. This is the Father's will. Say it louder. This is the Father's will. What is the Father's will? Huh? Father's will. 
Constitution. What? That of all, say all, all. including marriage. You are not supposed to lose your children. You are not supposed to lose your marriage. You are not supposed to lose your job. You are not supposed to lose your sins. You are not supposed to lose your success. You are not supposed to lose your family. Come and say amen. amen. Not one thing should be lost. Nothing. Of all. He said this is the will. I believe this message is blessing you. Please visit and share videos on anointedtube.com the world database of Christian preachers to help us reach 100 million people. The message continues after this video about anointed tube. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures, click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Sent me. 
Says God's will that I don't fail. Says it's not the will of God that I should fail. Says God sent me to succeed, not to fail, to win and not to lose, to keep and not to throw away. Somebody say Amen. 1973, we bought a land named Miracle Center. As soon as we started laying the foundation in 1974, a lady came there and cut the land into two. He said, I'm the owner of two by two. <laughs> Brought the surveyor and cut the land into two. The land is five by 250. She cut it into two. Surveyor began to When I got there, I said, Surveyor. <laughs> surveyor. <laughs> when I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my riches gain, I count but not. Yourself carry your instrument. I say, when I was ordained, my hand was not defamed. My ordination did not make me paralyzed. I said, before my ordination, I had power, but now that I have double power, if you love yourself, carry your instrument. He said, I'm paid. I said, that's the wrong money. So he continued working. As soon as he finished numbering the blocks, I called my driver and few of my staff to have a memorial service. <laughs> <laughs> we dug a three feet by four feet deep hole and packed the twelve blocks and buried all. I had funeral service and sang, God be with you till we meet <laughs> The lady came in fury, angry. He said, did also have to kill me today? I said, no, my boys will kill you. <laughs> because you get to some age in life, you don't fight by yourself. You instruct people to do it for you. Do you say amen? Yeah. So I said, uh, you five of you, handle this woman. Don't beat her, but hold her so tight that she, cannot that she will know <laughs> you are in my name. By the time those people held her, she said, leave me up, leave me up, leave me up. I said, promise you will never step here again. <laughs> How many of you know that God didn't fight Lucifer? Archangel Michael was sent. <laughs> that the Archangel was sold in his hand. Huh? How many of you read there was war in heaven? Have you ever read there was war? Yeah. God never took part. No. He gave power to Archangel Michael. He destroyed Lucifer. And Lucifer till today is a loser. Yes. Don't fight. Find someone. You know what the Bible says? The Lord shall fight for you. Yes. But it doesn't come from heaven, so. <laughs> Amen. So, the woman went and reported to the man who gave us land. The man said, Madam, you should have come to me. Don't trouble the church. I gave the land to the church. We started building. As soon as our block was coming out of the place they called DPC, somebody went and bribed the town planning leader to come and uproot our blocks. That our church would be too noisy to the military-based hospital. And you know, every time the devil produces wrong thing, God has the right answer. Yes. I went to the man, I said, I'm here in love. I said, you have the right to either keep baby Moses as a midwife, and you leave, and you die, or you save his life, and God promotes you. He said, I don't care. I, I said, brother, you will care. <laughs> he said, I don't, I said, you will care. Give me your ear. Do you mean that 
Our church, he said, yeah, you clap, you sing, you dance, you play trumpet. We can't let you be here. I said, brother, just follow me. Ten minutes. That was the time Nigeria we used to do. Ten flights a day to the I put him in my car. I said, be here. And as God will have, while we were arriving, the first flight just came. Ooh. I said, how many trumpets are as loud? <laughs> That's why your knowledge should not only be at the pulpit. You should exceed the pulpit. Tell me how many trumpets the church choir will blow to have the noise of 737. He said, no. He said, fine. He said, well, well this is a forbidden zone. It's too high. I said, fine. I'm going to pay one of my staff to climb this tallest palm tree and the rubber. We will measure it. He said, don't do that. I said, my friend, if you say don't do that, Reverend, you shouldn't do what God will be angry about you for. I gave somebody 10, 10 pounds. I said, climb up. Put tape there. Let's measure from there down. So the last flower of the rubber tree will measure 43 feet to the base. He said, but government rule. I said, I will go to Lagos and get the paper. Say success. Say maintain it. He passed this way, I passed this way. He passed this way. I wrote a letter to Federal Minister of Aviation and Federal Minister of Works and told them that I dreamt we built a cathedral and the height was dust up and that it's to be near the airport. The then Minister of Aviation and the then Minister of Works wrote and said, don't exceed the height of the rubber you measure. <laughs> Some of you would have said, why climbing rubber tree? What will you have for reference if the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is not in the Bible? Yes. Are you hearing me? That rubber alone. I said, how many times has that crap crashed on top of rubber? He said, don't let it be above the rubber. <laughs> so we built the church 37 feet from ground level. Six months after we opened it, headline observer, Miracle Center to go down. I said, the government that pulled it down will go down before them. <laughs> Maintaining success. maintaining success. Some of you know how to get there. You don't know how to remain there. Yeah. And Jesus says, not the, the will of the Father yeah. is that I lost nothing. Yeah. Somebody gaining anything from this? Oh, yeah. I say, are you gaining anything yes, from this? Sir. So, we build the building to the height. Federal government decreed that they want to put airport Wrong way should pass through Miracle Center. <laughs> how many of you have ever seen me happy? How many of you know when I'm... How many of you have seen me happy? Pray for my anointing and not my annoyance. Both of them are good. But don't pray to see the other one at all. I came to Lagos. That time, Jordan Barak was not... Uh, as barricaded as it is now. I saw the audience to see the head of state. He said, well, my reverend, you know, when the law of the land, the law is made. I said, you know why you made law? He said, no. I said, because you are dead. He said, there are more than 200 people waiting to take your seat now. Do you want to lose it? He said, what do you mean? I said, government can change hands. He said, are you going to search school? I said, no. I said, the Bible said the kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of his Christ <laughs> and of his son. And our own weapons of warfare are not kind of. They are mighty to pull it now. So they sent the federal ministry, minister of work to see me, to negotiate with me. And they promised to give me one million pounds to remove the church from there. 
I went to prayer and God said, my glory is dead. It shall not be so. So I sent message back. Then one evening, the then head of state came to me and asked them to send for me. We came out, the governor of the state that time, we came out. He said, let us give you the then Osadebe cake, which is now Sheraton Hotel in Benin. He said, take that, leave this. I said, God told me, you should live here. Yes. And move. Yes, sir. Are you hearing me? Yes. The Bible said the foundation of the law standeth sure, not government foundation. Yes. I lost now. Some of you would have heard of one million, then you call them high care because of it. There are some millions not from God. Cocaine million is not from God. India head million is not from God. Selling your body to make millions is not from God. So they say, what do we do? I said, leave the building alone. The federal government excised that building. I went to Ogbe Quarter and paid 13 million to destroy people's houses. I redirected the wrong way and left Miracle Center alone. Guess what? A year later, when they were paying those, they took their lands and building. It was paid at Miracle Center. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. This message and a collection of other messages are available at Iwo Media Services. For devil's children to kneel before you. What you find on earth can be found in heaven. If I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven. Oh my God! Everybody shout hallelujah! Happy be ye the host of Man of Faith. of other messages are available at Iwo Media Services. Iwo Media Services, inspirational, world-class production. Listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. 
We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Idausa is my father. My first encounter with uh, Archbishop Idausa, he was doing a big crusade uh, in the center of Accra, which is called Circle. He said, if your faith say yes, God cannot say no. Idausa is a man that believe with God, all things are possible. He had an unwavering faith. He had an unshaking faith. He had an unbreaking faith. He had faith in God. He saw God as he's talking to a faithful father. He saw God like his son will see a father who he trusts that is faithful. Whatever I ask my daddy to do, he will do it. That was Idausa's level of faith, beyond mass uh, explanation. He had faith. Spiritual a person, yet he was so human in nature. A man who reached out to everyone, the high, and the law in society. A man who rubs shoulders with presidents and the highest of dignitaries you can think of in society. I feel very blessed because the Lord has called me to preach the word of God in Africa and particularly in Nigeria. Um, I've been here with my husband 40 years now. Uh, it, it's a blessing. And it's particularly been a blessing to work with Papa Idahosa and Mama Idahosa. When you talk about legacy, I remember traveling with Archbishop Idahosa to Kaduna for the consecration of Bishop Oyudepo. I think it's Faith Liberation Chapel. I remember it as if it is today. And uh, Archbishop said, we are going. And when we got to Benin Airport, uh, Okada, uh, that's Chief Igbenidion, had given him an aircraft. So we flew from Benin City Airport to Kaduna. And I carried, and it was there he told me in the preach, he said, This is my son. At the point, at that time, I didn't really know Bishop Edipo. 
this must have been early in the 80s or something. And then many, a couple of weeks after, Bishop Edepo came to Church of God Mission, Sunday evening service. And I remember the first message he preached, it was on the prodigal son. The man brought me out from the dungeon. Papa Idahosa was, he was a man full of energy and vision. Uh, he, he, he was always getting, moving on from one project to another. And often when he started a new project, we whites, we or we boys would say, why is he doing that? We couldn't see the vision at all. We thought, hmm, this is very funny. But then sometime later we would realize, oh yes, okay, I see why he's done that now. And I was a Muslim that I gave my life to Christ. In Ghana, there was this kind of freedom of worship. There were a lot of Muslims. And among those people that were the grace of God, I gave my life to Christ. And I wanted to go to Bible school when I felt the call of God upon my life. And unfortunately for me, at that particular time, with the Assemblies of God Ghana, there was no space for women to go to Bible school. So my pastor called me and said, he wants me to go to Nigeria and meet with Indahosa because there is a room in that particular ministry for women. And I traveled to Nigeria by the grace of God. On getting there, I met with the Archbishop, my first time of meeting the Archbishop in the Hosa of Church of God Mission International. What an awesome privilege it was to see this man of faith and boldness. I will never forget the Onicha Crusade. At that time, the head of state in Nigeria had passed the law that nobody should do open air crusades. And Archbishop said he went to pray and said, God, God, what they are saying, and God asked him, what do you want? He said, I want to do crusade. God said, go ahead and do your crusade. So he sent us, I was part of the uh, advanced team, to go and paste posters all over Odicha. And we went to put posters all over Odicha. And the first day of the crusade, a truckload of soldiers came. The man of faith, the man of prayer, the man of courage, the man of peace. And Archbishop mounted the platform. And, and the soldiers came with their guns. When Archbishop started preaching, they all put their guns down. When he made the altar call, they all raised their hands to receive Jesus as Lord and personal savior. And we stood there and the whole crusade was an eye opener for us. And right there, I decided I needed to go and know more from this man. Fortunately, he was offering scholarship for people who want to attend Bible school in Benin, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute. And so that particular year, I uh, requested, I wrote, and fortunately, I was invited to come. So uh, we went to Nigeria to begin. Uh, my class, Actually, I went there in 79. My class started in 1980. And uh, we went through the Bible training, and it was powerful. We were all charged up. He started uh, the Word of Faith schools. He started the Christian Hospital, Faith Mediplex. He started Benson the Hose University all those and well he's he's a man we can't we can't forget he was a great example to us and I thank God it's particularly good for us whites British because in Britain uh, people are rather skeptical these days you'll not find many people who are really born again Christians um, people of faith are few in Britain, but if we can come here and our faith can be uh, increased, can be inspired, particularly by the things that Papa did, we are blessed. Let me share this. And I think for those who were around in Church of God Mission at that time, we traveled to Washington for Jesus. John Geminis, who went to Baltimore 
flew to New York, and then flew to Lagos on Nigeria Airways 11 hours. And then we took Okada from Okada Air from Lagos to Benin City. It was bad weather. Brother, it was one turbulence I, I told God, as long as I'm alive, never let me face anything like this again in my travel. I'm sure Dausa and the wife Margaret were in the first class, which is only divided by a curtain, because it's a 90 seater plane. And we took off from Lagos to Benin. It was bad weather, raining cats and dogs. We rented a storm. There were Filipino pilots. And then they said that he has lost contact. The pilot said, listen, he has lost contact with Lagos. And so he doesn't know where he is. That is ridiculous. You are supposed to be taking us to Benin. So if you, the pilot, has lost contact and you don't know where you are and it's raining cats and dogs, what do you want us to do? And when I looked through the window, brother, I was sitting at the edge of my seat like this. I was shaking in my boots. I'd never been scared like that. I thought I was, I, it, it was a life and death situation. The plane will move, dive, turn left, turn right. When I looked through the curtain, I was looking at the reaction of the Abishoy Dausa. He would say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then one time he stood up in the aircraft, he lifted his hand. I will never forget. He said, God, this is what he said, God, you called me. And you didn't say I would die in a plane crash. My mission is not finished. My assignment is not over. We call the enemy to order and command the devil to back off. Now you pilot, you better find out where you are and take us to our destination in the name of Jesus. Then he sat down. Five minutes time, the pilot said, he has made contact with Port Harcourt. Listen to this. We are supposed to be doing 30 minutes from Lagos to Benin. And the pilot, we, we landed in Port Harcourt. So we were on the, we have lost our way, we would have ended up in the sea. I will never forget. We landed in Lagos, it was still raining. That is where the testimony is. Mama, the house was there, you can ask her. I told Papa, can I please go for bus? Because I was afraid, can we get a bus so we go to Benin? He said, no. James, you don't travel like I do. I must conquer the devil today in the air. I said, what is this? I was scared. I said, Papa, you want us to die? He said, James, if I don't conquer the devil, I will not be able to travel by air. Okada gave us his gold plated aircraft. Chief Ibunidion, he called him. The plane rolled out from the hangar and we went by air to Benin. And that Sunday evening, he made me go to church and give a testimony. He said, Ghana boy. He calls me Ghana boy. I came, he said, Give them your testimony. You coward. <laughs> Another powerful miracle was when the witches in the whole world decided to come and have a meeting in Benin City. And Archbishop said, not when he's here, there won't be any such meeting. The chief priest then was summoned, his name Chief Eboho, because he was a representative of the witches then. And he said, the meeting, nobody, not even God could stop the witches from meeting. Then daddy said, or papa said, yes, God will not waste his time to stop you because I'm here to stop you. God has put me here to stop you. And guess what? That meeting never took place in Benin City. When you are with him one on one, you will feel an aura that defies definition. You know, it's as if you are in the presence of God, of a deity, of something that is beyond where you are. You know, uh, he never celebrated mediocrity. He never took no for an answer. He dared to go where nobody wants to go or everybody feared to go. He was a man that believed in venturing where others feared to venture. He was a trailblazer. 
I remember those days. For example, this television ministry that's becoming uh, anything today, it also started it in 1974-75. I'm honored to have been one of his sons. And uh, by the grace of God, I think that um, that sign wonder anointing and his boldness. I was I did a meeting for Dr. Maurice Serrillo in 2010. And just before I spoke in his world conference, they said, uh, oh, miracles don't happen in America because they have a lot of doctors. It happens in the third world. Well, when I took the microphone, I just shared my testimony. 23 cripples gave me the aztecs and began to walk. Um, that kind of boldness to decree and declare, I took it from the late Archbishop. I believe in the transference of spirits, and I believe strongly, like God told Moses, I will take up the spirit that is upon you, and I will put it upon the 70. I'm one of the people who took of that spirit of signs and wonders from the Archbishop. Making a movie of the Archbishop will really, really help the next generation. Because the young preachers and the young ministers that are coming up have no clue of who he was. It, I mean, he will still be preaching and cripples will start walking. Um, that was an awesome man of faith. I remember whilst we were in school, he went to visit and it was shown on TV. Um, he went to visit Kenneth Copeland. And when he got there, they, he was supposed to have gone the previous day, but he arrived late. So they announced, when they announced that the Archbishop Idahosa has arrived, six cripples got out of their wheelchairs. That is how anointed uh, Papa was. We must keep his legacy alive. Idahosa is dead to some people, but to us, to me, Idahosa lives. Hello, I am Bishop Margaret Benson Idahosa, the wife of the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa that did wonders while he was on earth here. Early in the morning when I rise, I will lift up my eyes. Now let me let you know how I got to meet him. You know, in those early years, he used to ride his bicycle with some trucks going from street to street, and one of it was my street. And every time he comes, we call him pastor. Pastor, he was young then, about 21 or 22. He was very, very young, but he didn't mind. He was not ashamed of the gospel because he knew that that was the power of God in his life. And one of these days, he was riding past, and people were crying in my house. <laughs> and he just stopped, brought his, brought his uh, small little Bible out and came in, just uh, uh, with it through the crowd. And he came and I said, Pastor, please, today is not like any other day. Somebody just died. <laughs> He say, ah, I have been riding my bicycle all through. Till this time, it was about four o'clock. And I want to raise somebody. I say, hey, please, I beg you. 
don't, don't make a mockery of your God. He said, no, 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 no. I want to wake him up because God has told me in the book. Then he opened the book and read it that, uh, uh, Behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpents, to tread upon scorpions, and to raise the dead. And I said, listen, don't make a mockery of yourself. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal that sin. Raise the dead. I said what? I beg, what did I talk? Benson, you mean what you say that we can raise dead person? Yes, absolutely. Have you raised dead person before? Uh, no. Why? What you say I can do it? Yes, in the name of Jesus. He <laughs> said, no, 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 come and show me where the baby was. So I said, okay. I took him to the room where the baby was lying. It, it was she. She was about uh, three years old, three or four, four years old then. And I said, "Listen, this baby died at about nine, and it's about four o'clock now. The baby is already changing color. The fa why why he why she was not being buried at this time is that the father has to go to the secretariat to get a death certificate." And he said, oh, there's no need for that now. Let's do it. Let's do it. I said, how? How are you going to do it? And he said, okay, go out if you don't want to see, see me do it. But, uh, you know, as a stubborn child, then I stood, at the, I stood at the door. I stood at the door with my back laid at the door. One, one eye on this side and one eye on the front door. And he prayed. Child. Be healed. I will bring to you an offering. After he prayed, he asked me, What is the name of the child? What did the girl name? I said, It's Inwarata. I'm a living testimony. I give God the glory for keep counting me among the living today. I'm a testimony that the whole world knows about through my father, late Ben Sinidahosa. I was sick about two weeks. After the sick, conversion hold me. So I, I, I died. When I died, they kept me inside one room. So my people was crying, weeping. About two hours, about three hours later, my father come, my late Benson in the house. He said, what is happening? They told him that her daughter, their daughter has lost. They said, what happened to her? He said, she was confused. So they tried the, in the ordinary native daughter tried, they can't raise her back to life. He said, where is her now? He said, she's swallowing dead. He said, he asked my father the question. He said, daddy, do you believe that the God I serve can raise him come back to life. My father said yes. So he said they should take him to the room. Then take him to where they, they lie me down. So carry me, they were praying with some of members. As they pray with God that answered by fire, hear their prayer. I come back to life. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That is how I'm a living so today. And he just stretched his Bible and himself on that child and said, Inuata, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that has empowered me to raise the dead. Now, come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Inuata, I command you, rise up! I was 
just peeping. And all of a sudden, the, the child that died at about 9 o'clock sneezed. <laughs> <laughs> Look back to me after a year and three months in the womb. So my mother passed through many tribulations before she gave back to me. Many said maybe I'm not a baby, I'm a wood, I'm this, but for God be thy glory. When they gave back to me, I'm, I'm a human being. And after they gave back to me, the devil, the useless man, raised up his ugly head to take my soul away. Did you know I took to my heels? I couldn't stand I couldn't wait, and I ran out. And then he brought the child with him to the mother. He said, please give this child something to eat. And everybody was surprised. Everyone was shocked. Ah, and he just left. And when he left, I, I sat down and I was thinking, what is the thing that made this man to raise this child from the dead? There must be power superpower then i wasn't a child of god my mother used to serve um, she was a princess of olokun shango and all that and i said oh, the, the the power that raised this child from the dead must be a power that surpasses the power of these graven images that has no power so the father just came and we started celebrating, but he was gone. But in the night I sat and I, I started praying and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, just touch me. I have been hearing messages of salvation from here and there. Even the church I, 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 I used to go then, but I just knelt down and I said, Father, let Jesus come into my heart right now. And I need to know this power that raised this child. And that was all I prayed. I didn't know how to pray salvation prayer. But I just knelt down and I said, Father, please, if you were the one that raised this child up, let come into my life and let me act and walk and believe like us. That young man that we call pastor believed, and he did this. And you know, when I finished prayers, there was an abundant joy, unspeakable joy in my spirit. And the following day, uh, we, we used to call him Brother Benson. He came and said, where is the child? We said, the child is there. And I called him to the room and I said, you know what I did last night? I did know. Uh, I, I don't know how to do it, but I just knelt by my bedside and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, let me have a part of that power. I said, ah, you have done it. And I knelt down, he prayed, and I, and I said the, the sinner's prayer, and that was what got me into where I am now. And I'm glad. Okay, because I'm still alive, my father, Benson Dalsa, is still alive because I'm a living testimony. I'm glad that I, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing now because there was sign, there was wonder, there, were, there, there was miracle that got into my heart. Thank God for today and my life. I have about eight children, two guests, and two boys and six guests. He was a man that did everything by faith. I have about 10 grandchildren to the glory of God. Now I understand the, the type of joy. The Bible said that the joy that no man can give, that is the joy that Jesus gives when you give your life to him. Inomegata, 
e no me ga jebe e no me ga ta ni jesu me gu ese e no me ga ta gu ese You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there. This is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures, click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures, click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you for taking the time to watch this powerful video of Archbishop Benson Indaosa. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was a charismatic Pentecostal preacher. He is the founder of Church of God Mission International. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was popularly referred to as the father of Pentecostalism in Nigeria. 
and I'll like you to know that he was also my spiritual father. Please do not forget to share this video to bless all the people. Let this video go viral. Remain blessed. Hello, this video is about Archbishop Bensi Idaosa, his early Christian ministry testimony. As a young Christian, I once heard my pastor say during a morning service that Christians could raise the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe it with my, all my heart. And flying around on my bicycle in those days, I went through the city of Benin in Nigeria in search of a dead person to raise to life. After five hours of hard searching, I found a company where a little girl had died a few hours before. The corpse had been cleaned and prepared for burial. I walked boldly to the father of the child. The God whom I serve can bring your baby back to life. I told him, will you permit me to pray for the child and bring her back to life? The man was startled, but he agreed. I walked into the room and up to the bed. The child was cold and dead. With strong faith in the Lord, I called on the Lord to restore the child back to life. I turned to the corpse and called it by name. Arise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God, the corpse sneezed heavily. Alas, the child had come back to life. God is Bensi Indaosa. Now, Bensi Indaosa childhood. Bensi Indaosa was born in Benin City on September 11, 1938, to a pagan parents. He was a sickly infant who was always fainting. As a result of his constant illness, his father ordered the mother to throw him in the dustbin. When he was 18, year, 18 months old, he was left on a rubbish heap to die. He was rejected by his father, sent to work on a farm as a servant, and was denied education until he was 14 years old. His education was irregular due to the poor financial status of his parents. He later took correspondence course from Britain and United States while working in Bata Shoe Company. His conversion and call to ministry. His conversion was drastic and his calling supernatural. He was converted by Pastor Akos on a football field on one Sunday afternoon while playing soccer with his teammates. Thus, young, ben young Benson became the first Benin member of Pastor Akbar's small congregation. As a young convert, he became very zealous in winning souls and in conducting outreaches in villages around Benin City. He was called to the ministry in a night vision from the Lord. I have called you that you might take the gospel around the world in my name, preach the gospel, and I will confirm my words with signs following, said the voice from heaven. The room was filled with the presence of God as Benson fell to his knees before the Lord. Wherever you want me to go, I will go. He prayed through the night, renewing his vows to God and interceding for his people who were yet to hear the message of salvation. After his call, Benson launched into ministry, work preaching from village to village. The gospel of, the, of, of Jesus Christ with great power and anointing, more people confess Christ as their savior and more healings occur as he prayed for the sick. Expansion of his ministry and his credentials. Archbishop Benson Daosa, the Archbishop himself and the founder of Church of God Mission International Incorporated with his headquarters in Benin City, Nigeria, established over 6,000 churches throughout Nigeria, Ghana before 90, 1971. Many of the ministers he supervised pastored churches of 1,000 to 4,000 people. In addition to filling the position of Archbishop of Church of God Mission, he also he, he was also president of All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, president of Idaosa World Outreach, 
and president of Faith Medical Center. He had positions in numerous organizations, including the College of, Bish of Bishop of the International Communion of Christian Churches and the Ora Robert uh, University in Oklahoma. It also earned a diploma in divinity from Christ for the Nation Institute in Dallas, Texas, which he attended in 1971, a doctorate of divinity in 1981 from the World Faith College, New Orleans, and a doctor of law degree from Ora Robert University in March 1984. He also received another degree. He also received other degrees from the International University in Brussels, Belgium. Archbishop Benson and his wife, Margaret Idaosa, were blessed with four children. Idaosa Supreme Tax. So winning was Idaosa primary concern with a motto Evangelism, our Supreme Tax. He worked towards his goal of reaching the origin Nigeria, Africa, and the rest of the world with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As a black African, he found the doors of African countries were wide open and he ministered in over 133 countries all 123 countries all over the world. Crusade played a major role in his ministry. He was involved at least one crusade per month. A record crowd of nearly one million people a night attended his Lagos crusade in April 1985. He established the Redemption Television Ministry with a potential viewing audience of 15 million people. What leading gospel minister said about Archbishop Idaosa? According to Mrs. Gordon Frader Lisser, President of Christ for the Nation Incorporated, Dallas, Texas, USA, I know of no young black in all Africa, who is preaching, who is reaching million as Benson is, in crusade with hundreds of thousands in attendance in in, a, in his weekly nationwide telecast, in his Bible school training eager students from several nations. He also conducted campaigns in Sweden, Singapore, Malaysia, Korea, Australia, and United States, where he often appeared on national religious telecast. His burden for souls, his ministry of healing and miracles, even to the raising of several dead, demonstrate he is especially core of the Lord in this end time. Dr. Ben Akosa remarked, Benson Daosa is sought after by everyone in the state, from government officials to beggars. When they pose questions and explain their problem to this man, they receive instantaneous miracle solution, just as the people did in Bible days with God's prophet. The people got miraculous answer from, his, from this mighty leader of God's people, said Daniel Oris. Benin City respect and salute this great man of God even at his death. I have been with him on visit to many officials, to the governor, to the powerful beneath tribal kings. He moved with God and his people knows it. His great miracle cathedral, his headquarters sit over 10,000 in 1981. His Bible school attract upper class people from different African nations and also come from Maurice, India, uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, the Middle East, Europe, and other nations of the world. A truly international Bible training center of dynamic faith. People know that Bishop Idaosa preached what he practiced. Dr. Idaosa evangelistic ministry has reached nations around the world. He was the first Af black African evangelist to shake Australia in a massive crusade that got national attention. His seminar have affected Christians and church leaders in many countries. I sincerely salute this man because he practiced among his own people what he preached to the world. Bensi Indaosa was a man who believed God's promises 
and that God's miracle provision applies to Africans as well as to Americans. He believed that Africa has a part in God's work and Africa will reap God's blessing. Evangelist T. S. Bond from Tulsa, Oklahoma remarked, Many who followed Idaosa's teaching have been saved from poverty and have learned to plant out of their des- have learned how to plant out of their desperate need and to look to God as their divine source, thereby becoming prosperous Christians in their own land. It also rose from the rank of an ordinary man to a world leader's leadership as a pastor, a builder, a counselor, a prophet, a teacher, uh, an apostle, an evangelist, a man of godly wisdom and of Christ-like compassion, whose ministry has blessed million, millions the world over. Idaosa was the greatest African ambassador of the apostolic Christian faith to the world. The secret of his success. Idaosa operated in faith. He had a robust faith. He believed and trusted God with a childlike faith. He once said that living a daily life of absolute faith in God is the only secret to great success. He believed God for everything. All things are possible to him that believes. He spent quality times in prayer and in the study of God's word. He said that if someone spent time studying the Bible and acting on it, people will come looking for that person for life solutions. He also also spent time studying the works and the lives of other successful people, both in the gospel ministry and other faith of human endeavors. And he applied the principles he learned, he learned from these successful people to his life and ministry. He was very energetic, hardworking. One of the ministers who served under him said that he had never seen a man who worked as hard as Archbishop Benson Daosa. He was committed and consistent, and he had confidence in himself. He was very humble and full of godly wisdom. Archbishop Bensi Idaosa was said to be the leader of over 7 million Jesus people worldwide before he went to be with the Lord in February 1998. Now I'm going to talk about his early ministry again. As a youth, he got converted to Christianity by a certain pastor at Paul and joined the flagging congregation as one of the first members. He was very active and converted many to Christianity. After experiencing a revelation from God, calling him into ministry, he began to conduct outreaches from village to village before establishing his church in a store in Benin City. Archbishop Bensi Idaosa was well known for many notable quotable quotes, including, My God is not a poor God. Your attitude determines your your attitude determines your attitude. It is more risky not to take risk. I am a possibilitarian. A big head without a big brain is a big load to the neck. If your faith says yes, God cannot say no. Among others, many of these messages on faith, miracle, and prosperity remain a classic among Pentecostal. He had strong links with international gospel ministers like Billy Graham, T.L.S. Bond, Kenneth Hagin, Penny Inn, Ryan Bonke, Maurice Cerullo, Ora Robert, amongst others, and took the gospel to 145 nations in his lifetime. At the time of his death in 1998, he had preached to more white than any black man and to more black than any white man. His desire to meet the need of the total man led him to establish several other arms of the ministry apart from the church. They include Faith, Metaplex, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, Word of Faith, Group of School, Bensi Indaosa University, which is currently under leadership of a son, Reverend E.F.B. Uh, Idaosa, his wife, Margaret 
uh, Idaosa is the current Archbishop of the church. It was used by God to perform many miracles, including healing the blinds, raising up 28 people from the dead at different times in his ministry. You must understand this powerful man of God that God used to affect the nation of the world. And I'm glad and privileged that he was my father in the Lord. I am honored to be a part of his anointing, a part of his, of his ministry. I want to ask you, please make sure you share these videos, this video, this particular video to bless all the people and make sure you have enough time to visit Anointed Tube, support Anointed Tube and let people all over the world around you, your village, your town, your city, your colleagues, your family, your friends, all your contact get to know about Anointed Tube. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this or, or watch this video. I believe that um, your life can never remain the same because God's servant was such a powerful, powerful, humble, great man of God that God used before he was called to be with him. I, and I'll say it again, I am grateful and I'm privileged to be a son to Archbishop Bensi in the house. The Lord bless you.